Nice. Yep, it's working. There we awesome. go. We got two things done in two minutes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. You'd figure figure out like after you know a couple of years, we'd figure out Zoom, but we're still learning and and everything. So here uh, here's our before we begin. Right, be ready to take notes. We'll go over a lot of things today. Um, so if you do have questions, feel free to use that Q and A box or the chat box. Help us get to know you. First name, grad year, maybe the city you're from. Uh, Natalie's from the Boston area. She'll introduce herself in, in just a minute. So she may know where some of you guys are from and then a position or positions you apply. Awesome. Okay, so who are who you're hearing from today? Uh, my name is Sue Weber. I'm a senior partner, um, event director here at NCSA. I've been here for six and a half, almost seven years now. Um, my background's in volleyball, so that's why Natalie's here. She's going to help you with some soccer-specific um, information. But I played volleyball at the Division One level. I coached at Division One NAIA club in high school, so kind of got all of those levels uh, uh, covered. And I started out with working with our clients one-on-one, -on -one, and now I'm with our um, partner and programs and and, and uh, going to events and virtual events like this one. So. I'm happy to be here, but really what, who you're gonna hear from today is Natalie. So Natalie, you wanna share with, you, with the listeners your background? Yes, perfect. Well, thank you, Sue. Hi, everybody. My name is Natalie. Um, I, am a, I am a partner event director here at NCSA. Similar to Sue, I started with NCSA, well, actually on the sales side as a recruiting coordinator. So I was in that position for about nine months and then transferred over to the events team, which absolutely love. Great transition. I played soccer at the Division I level at the University of Iowa. Um, I graduated in 2020, so <laughs> right during the pandemic. Um, and for about four years, I was a member of the U.S. Youth National Team program. So that was definitely one of, you know, my high points in my soccer career and definitely one of the best ones I um can imagine, you know, participating in as well. But yep, so excited to hear from you guys and talk to you guys more about recruiting and, and all the ins and outs about it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, what are we gonna cover today? Our game plan today is just to tell you a little bit about NCSA and our partnership with Mass Athlete Performance. Uh, we'll go over divisions and scholarship opportunities at all different divisions. Uh, Natalie will talk about more her personal experience, obviously her personal journey as well. Uh, we'll overview some recruiting rules. There's always different things that happen for different divisions. So we'll, we'll try not to overwhelm you with all that, but give you some of the tips there. And then really what to do before and after your college ID clinic coming up. So in a, what is it, a week and a half or so, uh, you have that coming up. Natalie will be on site as well, which would be awesome for you guys to be able to talk with her and meet with her. Um, and then we'll end tonight with some next steps in Q&A. So who is NCSA? Um, NCSA is, a, our, we're a recruiting service, right? We provide recruiting services, but for the path to college. So it's not just sports oriented. We help with SAT, ACT prep, uh, college funding for finding different avenues of re, uh, financial resources to go to college. We also are part of IMG Academy now. Uh, which is the Athletic Academic Education and Development for Student Athletes. They have an academy um, facility down in Bradenton, Florida, where they host camps, clinics, um, and have a boarding school, obviously. But they also offer IMG Plus, which is a virtual classroom type of thing, or you can have one-on-one -on -one training for mental performance, nutrition, and then as well as college recruiting now, too. So it's pretty cool to, to bundle that all together now that we're a part of the family, IMG Academy family. Uh, but NCSA started its, its beginning in 2000. And Natalie will probably laugh at me here, but that was before YouTube, it's before Facebook, Huddle, like there's no vi online videos or online profiles back then. Um, I was like typing out my letters and putting them in the snail mail to send it off to college coaches. So that's our humble beginnings way back in 2000. Now we're the largest and most successful college network out there. Um, we have over a thousand employees. Many of us are former players or coaches like Natalie and myself. 
Um, and we've helped over a quarter million student athletes find their right fit over those last 20, or last 20 years. Um, work with 37 different men's and women's sports. So obviously men's and women's soccer, uh, but also volleyball. Uh, we added beach volleyball, women's wrestling, um, gymnastics, cheer is a new sport that we're servicing. So um, whatever, if you're, you know, if your cousin or your brother or your sister play a different sport, we can help them out as well. So you'll see that QR code in the corner. Um, this is if you want more information about NCSA and our services. Uh, you know, this is not a, a here's NCSA stuff today. Or it's more on recruiting. But if you do want more information about NCSA and our services, scan that code, fill out the form, pick a day and a time, and we'll get we'll get uh, connected with you. So a little bit about our partners. Obviously, Mass Athlete Performance is one of our great partners. Uh, we also partner with USU Soccer, a lot of our state associations as well. And we're partners with four different college uh, governing bodies, NJCAA, NCCAA, USCAA, NAIA. Lots of letters there, but those are four different divisions within um, the college network, I guess you could say. So we'll talk a little bit about them. Um, and then some cups here, uh, Club Champions League, Jefferson Cup. So across the board from uh, state associations to di different tournaments as well. Our ex uh, NCSA college coaches. So these are the people that we're working with our clients one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the combined years of college coaching is 235, which is blows my mind. Uh, we have all the divisions covered from NCAA Division One, Two, and Three, NAI Junior College. So if someone doesn't have a, a, an answer, they're knocking on their their uh, teammates' door and asking for that. Multiple championships won. These are the schools that they've coached at or played at. So you have an extensive uh, coaching staff helping you here at NCSA. But let's get into our bolt right now, uh, Natalie. Let's get into what we're what we want to cover: divisions, scholarships, and checklists. But the first thing: Do you have access to the poll, or can I put put that up? Do you still yep, have access? I can. To that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's put that first poll up there and relaunch it. Um, okay. This is going to be an interactive question for you guys on where, what different divisions there are. Let's take a moment to do that. Here we Perfect. go. Can I, Can you see it, Sue? Yes. Yep. Okay. So which governing body has three divisions? And it might be one, it might be all three, maybe two out of the three. So you can multiple choice here. The, uh, upper, the options are NCAA, NAIA, or NJCAA. We'll give about five more seconds. Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, three, two, one. All right, so what do we got here? We got everybody new NCAA, right? Division one, two, three. We kind of already put that in there. But the second one, there is a second correct answer is NJCAA also has three different divisions, which is very like, it's kind of a, not a trick question, but a lot of people don't realize that. So um, good to know that you got the NCAA ones right, and we'll tell you a little bit more about NJCAA. Okay, so let's stop sharing. We got that perfect, and we'll go to the next slide here. And this is a lot of information here, right? But we did talk about the three different divisions, NCAA Division One, Two, and Three, NAIA, which stands for National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, not a lot of NAI programs in the Northeast. So some of you may not be familiar with that division. It's very similar to Division II as far as uh, the way they recruit, uh, the different scholarship opportunities there, um, and just in general. But a lot of them are in the Midwest, I would say. So if you're looking outside of the Northeast, NAIA is a great option there. And then NJCAA, like we mentioned, has Division I and II as well. On the scholarship side, um, you can see the men's and women's there too. And a lot of people have the misunderstanding that they think division one has all the money, which they have money, <laughs> they have scholarship money. But if you look at on the men's side specifically, NAIA and NJCAA actually have more athletic scholarship money than maybe a division one or division two have. And what I mean by that is, you know, the average roster size you can see there 
there might be 30 on a, on a team, not, not all 30 may be on athletic scholarship. Um, if you have nine at the division two level, they're going to split those nine up into maybe 18 or on 50% scholarship. And then they're stacking academic scholarship on top of that. Um, division three across the board, all sports, there is no athletic scholarships available. It's all merit-based or academic-based, but they typically put together a pretty good package. So if you have a decent GPA, your, your scores are good, um, you know, division three still can have a lot of opportunities scholarship-wise. And then NAI, like I mentioned, they have, they can stack as well. But Natalie, uh, the question for me for you is tell us about your journey on the on the women's side. You know, you went division one, but how was mm -hmm. that? How was the you know scholarship opportunities presented to you as a player? Mm -hmm, definitely. So when I was having conversations with coaches, it was definitely a question I brought up with them every single one because it's something that you need to know and that you want to know. So my club coaches and my parents as well, I was lucky enough to have two older sisters who went through the process before me. So I kind of learned some tricks and tips from them as well, but it was definitely something that I wanted to bring up with each and every coach I talked to. So at the University of Iowa, I was lucky enough to come in as a freshman with a partial scholarship, um, just athletic based. And then my sophomore, junior and senior season, I was actually bumped up to a full scholarship. Um, which I'm incredibly grateful for. Um, now, one thing I do wish back in the day I did <laughs> take more seriously was my academics because you have all these options. You can get an athletic scholarship as well as a merit-based scholarship and an academic scholarship, um, which I wish I knew more and I wish I took more seriously because you can do a lot of endless things with that and just obviously get more opportunity for yourself. And one thing, I actually have an interesting story, Sue. So yeah. when I was being recruited um, from Iowa, I was actually being recruited by one coach and then he left the program and a new coach came into his position. So I haven't committed at this point yet. Um, and I was talking to my parents, I was talking to my club coach and the previous coach um, who left the organization, he actually offered me a full scholarship. And um, the new coach that came in didn't know anything about that. So I obviously had to bring <laughs> that up with the coach. Um, it was a little awkward just because I was young. I didn't really know how to word it all that well, mm -hmm. but it was one thing that I definitely had to bring up with him. So I mentioned, hey, um, the previous coach here did offer me this. Um, you know, what are you guys offering? I just obviously need to line it up with other things I have going on. And he was definitely straightforward and, and let me know that, you know, he wasn't aware, but he was going to go back and talk to his staff and everything and kind of figure some things out. So definitely my advice would be just to be very upfront and ask every coach um, and talk about it and just have an open conversation about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a great story, too, because there's always little situations like that. Everyone has a very unique journey, um, whether it's a coach leaving or a new coach coming in maybe you're offered different position or uh, different offers for different divisions. Um, and it, it coaches are not like going to shy away from talking finances with you. It's part of the job. That's why they're in the position. So a lot of people try like shy away from that conversation. Um, maybe not the first conversation you have with the coach, but it's definitely something that needs to be talked about because it's a financial decision for, for both parties. All right, so we mentioned some other divisions on that first slide that we were partners with. Um, NCCAA is National Christian College Athletic Association, and then USCAA is United States Collegiate Athletic Association. And the two things that are similar with these two organizations is that they can be dual affiliates. So meaning they could be an NAIA program and an NCCAA program, or Division II or Division III and a USCAA. Um, each of these divisions have its own national championship for, for their sport and soccer specifically. Um, so if you don't make the NAIA tournament, you could go and make the USCAA tournament. So there's other opportunities for, for tournament play. Obviously, National Christian College is going to have a more faith-based um, program, I guess you could say. And then CCCAA, 
I forget what they they say, 3CA2A or something like, I'm trying to get all these words, the letters and numbers together, um, but that is the California Community College Athletic Association. So just like G, um, NJCAA, these are two-year colleges where you go play for two years, get your associate's degree, and then you can transfer into a four-year program. So again, not a lot of people on, know about these divisions um, and that there's actually uh, playing opportunities as well as scholarship opportunities here. Okay, recruiting rules. Like I mentioned, ton of information on this slide, a lot of little dates here and whatnot, um, but different divisions have different recruiting rules for their coaches. On your side as a student athlete and on the family side, you can reach out to college coaches by email anytime. You could actually even e uh, call them and leave a voicemail but sometimes they're not allowed to call you back until a specific timing. So D1 and D2 are gonna be the most restrictive on their coaching or recruiting rules. June 15th, after your sophomore year, that's when they can start emailing you back, calling you back, um, and then you can go on visits as well for uh, June 15th for Division II, August 1st, um, Actually, I think it's September 1st now. We, there's all, all these rules changes. So unofficial visits, official visits is September 1 for soccer. Um, NAIA, Division III, NJC AA, no rules. Like you can contact anytime, you can call anytime. So even as a freshman, maybe they're not recruiting your, your grad year yet because they typically recruit a little bit later in the process. They could still have those conversations with you. So a lot of times that's a, one good practice for you, but also two, building those relationships and, and getting that, um, maybe that is a, a place for you to go for division three uh, and you wanna start that communication early. So Natalie, um, going back to your personal experience, right? Uh, you're, you were in their shoes just what, a few years ago. Uh -huh. So what was your kind of, or your, you know, your club coach probably helped, family helped. What was kind of the strategy there on your side? Mm -hmm. or your or your sisters too like any any yep so okay. um i would say my journey started a little early as well um and i know the rules have kind of changed nowadays mm -hmm. too but i first started um well for my club team we would go to showcases every single showcase i went to i emailed as many college coaches that i was interested in sent out my information um basically everything about me and let them know what time my games were, yeah. um, what number I was, you know, all the logistics and details that they needed. I made sure to send those out after the showcases. I would also follow up and say, thank you for, you know, taking the time to watch me. Um, please give me a call whenever, you, or I'm sorry, I would give them a call <laughs> because they couldn't give me a call at that point mm -hmm. in time. Um, so that's what I started doing for my kind of first go around of it. And then I started kind of going to some college ID clinics similar to this one as well. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Any coach that was in attendance, I would be emailing them. Um, and then I was also, you know, lucky enough to go to national camps as well. So we did have college coaches in attendance for practices that we had at those camps and also international games. So I did kind of get some exposure that way, which was very helpful. Um, and again, um, one thing I was really lucky with too was my club coach. He was very involved with my team's recruiting. Mm -hmm. So the college coaches that were interested in me, obviously um, they couldn't contact me directly themselves. So what they did was told my club coach, hey, tell Natalie to call me at this day and this time. I would reach out, give them a call. And then if I was lucky enough to get them on the phone, we would have a great conversation. If I wasn't, I would leave them a voicemail. And again, they couldn't call me back at that <laughs> right. time. So I would say, <laughs> I would say, hi, this is Natalie Winters, yada, yada, yada. And I would say, I'm calling back at this time um, and talk to you then. And that's kind of how it started off at first, um, kind of just getting some contact, getting some conversations with college coaches as much as I could, just to obviously get my bearings out there and just mm -hmm. see obviously to relationship wise and, and what I would be interested in. Then from there, um, I would start doing some college visits. Um, I ended up visiting, I think, six schools. Um, and from there, would have more conversations with the coaches and have some conversations with the players there as well. You know, visit the campus, see which one I felt more at home at and kind of just what felt right to me. Again, what we talk about a lot is finding the right fit for you. So not mm -hmm. necessarily, you know, the best soccer team, 
the best, you know, anything that you're looking at is just like the right fit, how you feel there, um, and just ultimately kind of um, the school you like the best, obviously. So I was, <laughs> was going on visits um, and ultimately found that Iowa was the best one for me um, and committed my, I verbally committed going into my junior year. So a little mm -hmm. early. I do wish the one thing I do look back on um, is keeping my options a little more open. I wish I did take a little more, you know, a couple more visits here and there. And I do wish I knew other schools that were out there. I personally, what I thought at first, um, I'm from Michigan. So I knew I wanted to stay kind of in the Midwest. And my ultimate goal was to stay in the Big Ten. But I do think if I broaden my horizons a little bit, looked outside different divisions and the kind of things like that, mm -hmm. it would have just been, you know, nice to see other schools as well in other areas. So I do wish sometimes I did a little more searching here and there, but ultimately, you know, I met some of my best friends at Iowa and had the best time of my life <laughs> and will take those memories with me for the rest of my life. So that's a little about my journey. Again, everybody's is so unique and so different, but I definitely recommend, obviously, just being confident in your first, you know, steps in recruiting is really reaching out to college coaches, sending as many emails as possible because they get so many emails at the end of the day. They have so many. So you just want to keep reaching out, keep letting them know that you're interested and that this is something you really want to do. So I'll back that up for sure. As a college coach, um, when I know that a student athlete was interested in my program, that helped me. Um, maybe I couldn't respond back yet, but the more I heard from the same person that, and it was, and we'll talk a little bit more about what to put in those emails and how to personalize it. But if they were paying attention to my program, um, that was a, a, a star, right? That was a step up than a mass email that just said, I'm interested in your school, period. Um, so definitely. But as far as the scholarship side and different divisions, I want, did want to touch on financial aid too, because it is a huge part of, especially the soccer world, uh, where it's not a headcount sport, meaning not everyone is on a full uh, athletic scholarship, usually our partial athletic scholarship with some academic um, scholarship, like we talked about with GPA and SAT. They're also merit-based, meaning if you have high honors, um, if you're involved with community service, maybe you are uh, majoring in nursing and they have a nursing scholarship specifically for the nursing graduates. Uh, so those types of things are also offered and you can stack those up. And then the FAFSA, uh, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to fill it out. I don't qualify. You never know. And it's first come, first serve. So don't, don't think that you're not eligible. Just complete it. It comes out October 1st for seniors. So graduating, you know, to be 2024 is this year, 23 is <laughs> whatever grad we're in. So seniors fill that out uh, if you haven't yet. Um, and then don't make it you know, harder than, than you need to. Maybe you have some money there that's left on the table. So don't leave money on the table for sure. Last thing here, NCSA checklist. Uh, Natalie will also laugh at me for this one, but I'm a very type A personality. I love checklists. Um, I like to know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing during this time. So on our website, ncsasports.org, we have a checklist for every season, for every grad year. So this example that we have up on the board is a winter checklist for juniors, talking about you know, a personal statement, maybe um, you know, making a, 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 a target list, uh, gauging your talent level. All these things are important for, for the next step. And actually it is a sophomore. That's like, like, where is the SATs at? So this checklist we got here up here is a sophomore checklist um, and, you know, doing what we need to do during that time. So check that out when you have a chance. All right, recruiting tips before and after the event. We have the event coming up. We have another poll for you. So go ahead and launch that one, Nat. Where are you guys at in your recruiting process? And it could be multiple choice here. Maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you're researching schools, communicating with some coaches. Maybe you've gone on a visit, have an offer. Maybe you're committed. Uh, you're just listening for fun. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, let us know where you're at here.
All right, we'll give about five more seconds again. All right, three, two, one. All right, let's see. We got a lot of just starting out and researching school. So this is a great starting spot for you. You're gonna really love the next section. Um, some of you are communicating with schools. Some of you are already going on visits, awesome. So this just helps us out to know where you're at and you know what kind of things to point out for, for everyone, perfect. Okay, coach evaluation. First things first, you know, college coaches are going to be at these uh, clinics, showcases, tournaments that you guys are going to. So what do they actually look at? Um, obviously, it's going to be soccer skills, you know, first touch, body position, movement, you know, all, all the things that go along with soccer. Um, but it's also some non- I guess, sport related stuff as well. So athleticism, of course, that's still sport related a little bit, but communication skills, body language. Um, are you reading the game? How good is your sport IQ? A lot of times when I was a coach, um, college coach, and we, so I'm going to talk volleyball terms, and maybe Natalie can talk soccer terms for you guys. But if I had a, a, an outside hitter that, that both girls were the same height, uh, maybe they're jumping well, they're pretty good passers, like all their athletic skills were pretty similar. I had to figure out how, how to differentiate those two players because athletically they're perfect, you know, or, or close to, to the same. So then how did they talk to their teammates? Were they paying attention in timeouts and huddles? Uh, did they make their parents go fill their water bottles up? Uh, we got granular because we're, we're bringing on a member of our family kind of like we want to make sure it's a cultural fit it's a right attitude type of fit um i think we've all been on teams where there's one bad attitude and one bad apple that could really kind of throw off a season so um as a college coach your your kind of livelihood depends on how good your team performs so you want to make sure you're bringing in good athletes that fit your culture and fit your program so that communication skills body language how do you um Again, Natalie, you're going to have to do soccer terms for me, but how, <laughs> what happens after a, a bad play? Maybe you get beat off the ball. Do you just like give up or do you bust your butt down to the, to the, where you're supposed to be? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me a little bit on the soccer side of some of those types of situations. Definitely. So I think one really big thing um, for coaches and I mean, just an outsider is me as well, not as a college coach, but as a college athlete and a player, mm -hmm. I think body language is a really big thing to me. Um, and for example, like you were saying, Sue, you know, if you lose the ball, sprint your butt back to the 18 or to the goal just to get your body behind the, the ball and to win the ball back. Ultimately, if you do lose the ball, you know, go ahead and go get it back. Also, I think leadership skills are a big thing, too. So talking to your teammates, you know, not obviously being rude, but, you know, directing them, kind of leading them where to be, kind of what to do always talk. I think one of my biggest pet peeves was, so I played center mid, obviously you have to have your head on a swivel the entire game. <laughs> so if I get a ball passed to me, I always wanted my teammate to say turn or man on, or don't turn, you know, anything like that to let me know that I can't turn or that I can turn and then I can go forward. So I think talking and just leading out there, you know, trying to be the best possible version of yourself on and off the field, I think is a really big thing for you know, exactly your overall um, cultural fit for the team mm -hmm. and to coaches too. I think just really, it's kind of like an interview. You have to think about it, putting your best <laughs> foot forward and, and yeah. showing that you want to be there, you want to work hard and you want to better yourself. So um, it all comes down to athleticism and, you know, your technical skills and everything, but I think body language and, and just showing your right self is definitely a, a huge thing too for college mm -hmm. coaches in this um, kind of situation. And the nice thing is that you have complete control over that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have complete control over how you communicate with your teammates and coaches and opponents and whatever else, how you react to plays and you can get better at them. Right. And I think college coaches will know that too. This is not like a one and done. I watch you play once and uh, I'm going to make a decision. It's going to be, I'm going to watch you as a freshman I'm going to watch you as a sophomore and I'm going to have you come on as a visit in, in junior year it is a year, years long process. Um, and then just a reminder for the clinic coming up, 
you will have an opportunity to talk and introduce yourself to the college coaches that are there at the clinic, as well as Natalie, definitely go up and say hi to her. Um, But here's an opportunity. They may not be able to tell you specific recruiting talks, but they can give you feedback about um, what to improve on or what, what they look for in recruits. They just can't give personal recruiting information to underclassmen. Um, so just note that when you're talking to them and they'll let you know too, if they're like, yeah, I can't answer that question. You know, that's on them. The rules are for them, not for you. Um, okay. So Natalie kind of talked about this a little bit before an event. So you have a week and a half or so of prep time. Uh, so this is a great way to update or, or make your target list to contact. Obviously, there's coaches going to be there. Map does, Mass Athlete Performance does a great job of putting the schools that are going to be there on their website. So check that out. Research those schools. But even if a school is not going to be there, a coach isn't going to be there, you can tell them about you know, you going to this event and that there's maybe going to be video. Uh, you know, I, I know that there's going to be video there. So that's something that you can even tell people that aren't live at the event about the event. Um, Natalie, talk a little bit about you. You did talk a little bit about like uh, Big Ten, you know, your division that you're 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 focusing on. But what about academics or size of school or, you know, how did you make those preferences or did you talk about it <laughs> with your family? So, yep. Again, I knew I didn't want to stay in Michigan. I really just wanted to (laughs) get out of Michigan just for the time being. Um, So I knew, again, Big Ten was one thing that I really was interested in. I did want a big school just because my high school, um, it was kind of a weird school. I had three schools to one campus. So it was already 6,000 kids at my high school. So I knew I did want a pretty big um, college I was in attendance to. Other things I looked at was, well, I did go through a phase where I wanted to go really south and nothing else because it was during the winter time and I wanted (laughs) to be warm. So that was kind of just a phase. So I I would say just keep thinking it out, um, keep thinking it through. One thing that was a little hard for me too was I didn't know what what I wanted to do after college and in the Mm -hmm. future. So it was a little hard kind of to narrow down based on academics Um, So I chose a school, you know, that had a lot of different majors that I could go into. Um, So I would definitely keep that open. But if you do obviously know, like, for example, like Sue said, if you you do want to go into nursing, I would say, you know, try and look at schools that have good nursing programs. Um, Or again, like engineering, if they have a good engineering program, definitely look into those types of schools. But again, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So I wanted to keep an option open where I had a school that um, you know, had a lot of different programs available for me. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think other things. Um, I think that was mostly it. I knew, um, again, big school. I did have some backups though. So one piece of advice I would definitely say is, you know, pick your dream schools, pick your target schools, and then pick your backup schools. So I did have a couple backup schools that were a little smaller in size and that we're a little closer to home, um, but we're still amazing schools and beautiful campuses as well. Um, so yeah, I would I would say start off there. Um, for me, again, I just had those big things that I wanted to kind of achieve and kind of look for, um, and ultimately kind of found the best fit for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, again, each person's journey is different. If you know that you want to go to med school afterwards, or you have mm-hmm. a, a graduate path, and you're focusing on academics, then make sure that you go to a school that has your academics, right? Your focus, and then soccer is maybe a, a bonus, so icing on the on on top. Um, as far as the graph here, ten target schools, five and five. That's minimum. I would say if you're a freshman or sophomore, let's make a target list of fifty or sixty schools. And that may seem like an overwhelming amount, but you want to start with the funnel really big, and then kind of then narrow it down as you start talking with coaches going on visits, it'll narrow itself down um, just naturally. So once you make your target list, research those college coaches and programs. So you can go to the school website, um, go to the bios of the coaches. You want to do some research on what is familiar about those, like what's personalized about the program and about the, the coaches. So if they played your position, you know, you can write that in an email. That's a very personalized, you did your, your homework. If they have marine biology and you want to, you know, study marine biology, 
Or what if you, you want to study marine biology and then you email a school that doesn't have marine biology? That means you didn't do your homework at all. Like right off the bat, the coach is going to be like, well, we don't have it. So I'm not going to go watch this player. So make sure you're noting some of those things and doing your research and then update your online profile. And this could be your NCSA profile. Great. Get in there, update everything. Um, or if it's your Twitter page or your club website has a profile on it, wherever your information is on, on the web, make sure it is up to date and accurate because college coaches will research yourself just like you are researching them. Um, online resume. So this is kind of a screenshot of, of what NCSA's profile looks like and what all you can add to it. Um, this is what college coaches are looking for. Your academics, GPA, test scores eventually. Uh, junior year, you're probably going to be taking the SAT or ACT. They want video. They maybe want to know who your coaches are. If you're looking in and around your hometown, um, coaches talk to coaches all the time. So your club coach may know that college coach. So use those references. Um, position grad year. They want to, they're going to be looking for a specific position of specific grad year all the time. So make sure you have that on there and then build your brand. And what we mean by this is if you have specific preferences, let them know that I want to, I want to study nursing. I want a, a big school, like Natalie said, or you want a small private school. You want to, you know, uh, a Christian experience, whatever it is, let those college coaches know, because that will help them make those decisions as well. Um, now you got any tips and tricks here on the on what to present to college coaches or what college coaches were asking you when you were going through the process? Um, I guess one thing about build your brand, um, be unique, um, mm -hmm. be yourself and show the coaches who you are. And definitely, obviously, you're representing yourself and your club team, you know, and in who you want to be. So definitely, obviously, put good things out there. But I would say be unique and be yourself um, with video. I do wish I had some video of myself um, <laughs> back in the day, just because I feel like it's an easy way to get, you know, your skills out there to coaches and they can watch you, um, you know, in your video and then come watch you in person as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something um, that is definitely an addition and, and would definitely help you as well. Yeah. We might talk a little bit more about video, but think of video, your highlight video as like the trailer to a movie. So it's like <laughs> a minute long, right? Like barely. And then mm -hmm. it, it drag it like, comes you in to come watch the movie, which is you playing. <laughs> so it's, you're not going to like do a whole movie review on a trailer of a movie, but you're going to go watch it so you can make your report, right? <laughs> End with the cliffhanger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Start with the good, best, best, uh, uh, you know, best plays and then end with the cliffhanger for sure. All right, so before the event, we talked about target lists, getting all that, doing your research, making sure your online profile's up to date, accurate. And then uh, Natalie talked about emailing these coaches. So tell us a little bit about what, you know, what you, can, you would wanna put into an email or what you did put in an email to college coaches. Um, yes, yeah, so basically everything you have right there. Mm -hmm. um, I would put in my schedule, well, if this was a showcase and, you know, kind of like a tournament, I would put in my schedule for sure, what times, what fields, and when I was playing, what days, everything like that. Um, definitely, you know, why I'm interested in the coaches program, kind of like how Sue touched on earlier in the presentation, but, you know, why, why do I want to go there? Why am I interested? Why do I want the coach to be interested in me? Um, and again, like, yeah, use that research you did earlier to kind of specifically show them why you are unique again, like I said before. Um, and then of course, you know, how they can find some more information about you. I mean, just give them every, everything that they need to know in that email. Um, so they'll get to know you a little bit. And I always like to, you know, just put a little flair and personality into the email. Don't, don't make it seem so straightforward, no emotion, things like that. Again, just be yourself and show who you are and the coach will really appreciate it, I think too. Mm -hmm. And then we get questions all the time about what do I put in the subject line, you know, and why we have it this way, like put the event name, you know, your college clinic coming up, your name, grad, your position, and that you have video on your profile. Because when I was a college coach, I knew that I needed I'll put soccer terms here, goalkeeper, a, a 2024 goalkeeper, so to speak. 
So I would search my emails for 2024 goalkeeper. And if it was in the subject line, I'm probably going to click on that email again. Um, but if it says your next recruit, I don't know that, you know, you're a 2024 goalkeeper. So that's my two cents on that. You can always make it your own, but uh, what we've gotten from feedback from college coaches is that grad year position is always important because that's what they're usually searching by first. Um, and then this email is just the start. Like I mentioned, it's years worth of, of getting to know you and watching you play. So one email and done is not going to do the trick for you. You're going to have to keep going. And, and this is just the start of the communication. If this is your first email to a college coach, it could be a little nerve wracking to hit that send button, um, but it gets, it gets easier. <laughs> but if you do your research and you know what to say, um, they're going to appreciate that research and appreciate the time that you put into it. Okay, so that's before an event. During the event, obviously you're doing your clinics, you're getting to talk with the college coaches that are there. Um, and focus just on, on doing your best. People, coaches know that you're not going to be perfect the entire time. Um, Olympic players make mistakes. You know, it's not like you're going to be 100% perfect every single play and every single day. Um, but again, it's how you react to that, re react to errors, how, what's your body language, what's your communication. So even if you feel like you had a bad event, um, it's not the end of the world <laughs> by any means. Um, but you do want to make a good impression after the event as well, especially if you have talked to a college coach there. You'll have that time to talk with them. If they give you two cents of feedback or they give you one recruiting tip or just any kind of thing, be specific. Tell them thank you for X, Y, Z that you told me at this, at this event. Um, let them know what's coming up next for you. Keep building that relationship like it's, it's going to be a next step for sure. Um, and set yourself up for success. Ask them a question, especially if you're a junior or senior, they can respond back to you at any level. Um, but ask about, you know, your, your play. Uh, maybe you are close to the campus and you want to go on a campus visit. Do you have a need for my position? You know, those things will prompt that college coach to send feedback to you. And then update your online profile, of course. Um, so NCSA profile or, or wherever your information is, if you get new video from this event, pop it up there, let college coaches know that you have new video. Um, Nat, any feedback there? No, I would just say, like you said, and to reiterate, just always follow up. I mm -hmm. think coaches would really appreciate the appreciation um, and just letting them know too, what is next for you. I think that's a big thing, you know, next event um, or just, yeah, plans. Again, personality, yeah. let them know who you are, um, show them a little bit about your life um, and they'll get to know you too. So just keep that communication up. If you don't hear back, just it, don't get discouraged. I think that's the biggest thing too. Do not get discouraged. Keep reaching out. Again, they're so busy. They have so much going on. So Mm -hmm. um, just be confident and, and keep following up. Yeah. Until you hear, no, we're not recruiting your position yep. or no, we're done. Um, <laughs> door is open. It, mm -hmm. It's up to them to, to tell you no. Um, but I think to your point there, when I was college coaching again, how many thank you emails I got, um, you'd be surprised. There wasn't as many as you, you we should have probably received. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a little bit goes a long way in, in the thank you world for sure. Okay, we did talk a little, uh, I did have a highlight video uh, slide up here. So update your highlight video. You'll, you can get a video, I believe, from your clinic um, on the 20th. Um, if you're making a highlight clip, put your best place forward first. So we talked about that with the, the movie trailer. Three to five minutes, if five is pushing it. Keep it to three. College coaches have the shortest attention span in the world, I want to say. So if you're not grabbing their attention that first 30 seconds with some kind of cool play, um, you know, you want to make sure that that play is first. And then update every three to four months. College coaches can't be everywhere all the time, um, but they can watch a lot of video. So if you update them, you know, every three or four months, maybe that's freshman, sophomore year. If you're a junior, senior, maybe it's every every other week sometimes because it's, it's decision time and you want to make sure that they know that you're interested. And it's an easy reach out to them. Hey, coach, I got new highlight video from this past weekend. Um, wanted you to, to, you know, have it. What do you think? Is there feedback? Do you, are you research or are you 
uh, recruiting my position, that type of thing. So First Scout has the filming sessions this weekend or for your clinic, not this week on the 20th. For more tips, we have tons of resources on our, on our uh, website, ncsasports.org. That's the men's soccer one. We have a women's soccer one as well. Um, anything here, Nat, did you, you probably, I didn't do highlight videos because I was on VHS and way back when. <laughs> That's my excuse, but I don't know about you. <laughs> um, no, again, I didn't have a highlight video, but I wish I did because coaches can't be in five places at once. So I think just giving that accessibility to them is going to get you, put you ahead of people as well. Yeah. So take advantage I, of it and have yeah. fun with it. <laughs> I think, you know, for your, your position too, if you wanted to go to Florida or California or even New York or something, it probably wouldn't have happened honestly mm -hmm. right yeah. like midwest a lot of midwest college coaches can go watch you play mm -hmm. at a at a clinic or showcase or tournament or whatever but the farther away you're looking the more important video is mm -hmm. and um we have clients from alaska and hawaii and international student athletes and it's almost all video so mm -hmm. that's important to have for sure okay last but not least ncsa recruiting resources this is just for your knowledge, right? So if you are interested in NCSA and what we have to offer, um, we do have a free profile that you can make and kind of mess around with and do some research on. These two resources are available on the free side. So if you go to the Find Colleges page when you log in, set, for this example, it's like I selected all the um, Southeast states here, Utah, Colorado, and then search, and it could give you a list of all those schools in, that, in those states. You can even filter by division, major, size of school. Like it's kind of like buying a house. Like I bought a house two years ago and I would put three bedrooms, two baths, right? Like <laughs> you put your filters in. Um, on the right hand side, these are our roster openings. So we have a college coach relations department here that talks to college coaches daily. That's their job. Um, so if they know of a, 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 a position that a coach is looking for, they'll put it on that board. So that's the roster openings. I think it's probably one of the most underutilized uh, resources because you can see Knox College, Division Three, looking for a 2023 outside back. Um, there you go. If, do some research if you're interested. Message the coach, and we're we're on our way. So that's half the battle sometimes is if they're looking for your position. Well, if I can find the slide here, membership here. Our highest level of membership is called MVP. You get a, every level gets a, a free profile. This is what's on the left hand side here. It's a volleyball profile, obviously, but you can see videos, academic information. It's basically like a sports resume. You put all of that in, that's what college coaches see. If you want more information, more help, we have SAT, ACT help, college funding, like I mentioned, a personal recruiting coach. So that slide where you had 235 years of college coaching experience helping you out, that's what's on the MVP side. Um, and then some college coach, you know, lots of other resources here. So if you're interested, we can set up a day and a time to talk further about that. My favorite quote or one of my go-to quotes, don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. And it's by John Wooden, a, a famous basketball coach back in the day. And I always say we can't control the weather or bad referees or <laughs> anything else that happens out there. But you can you can control researching schools, emailing your your programs, making your highlight video, you know, updating your profile. Those are things we can focus on and, and control, um, as well as your attitude and your communication, all those fun things. So next steps, scan the code if you want to set up that recruiting assessment call, uh, pick a day and a time that works for you. It'll go over your personal recruiting process. Right today we went over a lot of general stuff. Um, general recruiting and, and, and everything that has to do with soccer and kind of coming up. Um, but we want to talk about you, your personal recruiting journey as well. All right, Nat, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. I think you did good. Perfect. We got seven minutes. Well, we got, you know, any time here. If you don't have any questions, that's all we got for you today. If you do have questions, you can put them in the chat box, um, Q&A box. Follow us on social media. Uh, we have an NCSA soccer specific page on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, at, at NCSA is our main page, which covers all sports. There's my personal one. We got our emails up there. 
No, any questions coming through, Nat? We must have done it. We must have been Dang brilliant. Job. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, Natalie's going to be on site, which I mm -hmm. think I, well, I have met you in person now. So mm -hmm. I'm in Colorado. Natalie's in Boston area. Uh, we met once in Chicago at her headquarters. So mm -hmm. I had fun hanging out with you. <laughs> I had fun too. I think we had a blast. All right, we'll stay on for a few more minutes. Uh, a reminder that it was recorded, right? So if you hopped off early or if you're joined late, we will send the recording to you tomorrow through Zoom. Um, it'll, it'll come to your email. It'll have some links in there, or also our contact information, obviously. So look for that. I wish you the best of luck. I think it's a, gonna be an awesome clinic. Um, sounds like it's a really cool, Cool, cool um, opportunity for everyone. Mass Athlete Performance, we love partnering with them. I think it, you know, Lee's awesome to work with. Um, Natalie, what's your parting words of advice for, for uh, our listeners here? Um, I think obviously there will probably be a lot of nerves, but just have fun. I know that's so cliche <laughs> um, and easier said than done, but I just think have fun, show who you are, be confident and work hard. Um, and I think it'll all fall into place and mm -hmm. keep your mind open, learn some new things, um, talk so to some coaches and talk to all the players too, because who knows what can happen. All right, we do have two video questions. Uh, it's always video. <laughs> Doesn't matter what age the players the players are in the highlight video. Is it okay for a freshman and sophomore? Absolutely. Um, I think you know different divisions recruit at different times, um, but they like to see your progress as well. So if you're a freshman sending a video to a NJC AA school or an AIA program. Um, maybe they're not recruiting a freshman yet, or, or even at the, they don't even know what position they need for that grad year yet. But it's good to let them know that you're interested if you've done your research and you're interested in that school. So freshman, sophomore for a highlight video, especially on the girls side, I would say um, on the girls side, recruiting just happens a little bit earlier. Um, maturity, <laughs> growth spurts, you know, that type of things happen earlier than on the guy's side. Um, it might be pretty early on the guy side as a freshman, uh, but it's not going to kill your chances, right? It's just going to get your name out there sooner. Great question. And then we did have another one on highlights from a clinic versus, um, or video from a clinic versus highlight video clips from Huddle, maybe like a tournament, right? And they're both good. So you can send multiple videos to college coaches to, to look at. Um, they're, they probably will appreciate different scenarios too. Uh, so I wouldn't say one is better over the other, um, more video is better than no video. <laughs> so I don't know if that really answers your question, but, um, you know, it, it'll showcase more range of different things for sure. Mateo, I'm not message in the chat from Earl. No, it's probably maybe from a different participant. So don't answer it. <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. Well, if there's anything else, you have our emails here. You can always contact us. We're more than happy to help. And if we don't know the answer, we will get it for you. Um, the recording will be sent tomorrow, so look for that. Otherwise, you're welcome. I see some thank yous coming through. Mm -hmm. um, have a great rest of the night, and we'll see you. Hopefully, you'll see Natalie <laughs> on mm -hmm. the 20th. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you guys.